Hey there. Bonfireside Chat and all of the shows on duckfeed.tv are listener supported. You can go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv and uh, kick us a couple bucks a month if you want and get some cool rewards and, you know, support the shows. Once again, that is patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. Some of our landings were desperate adventures. We are now prepared to meet the inevitable counterattacks with power and with confidence. My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. And you're listening to Bonfireside Chat. It is a frenzied favorite. Yes. And this week we uh, have a little bit of a weird episode uh, as we are uh, getting our affairs in line. That's pretty grim. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to... as, we, as we prepare our respective wills. Yes. And uh... we're leaving it all to you guys. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, Brian uh... Wade, you get my skull. Allison wow. Baker, you get my, I don't know, collection of... Uh, Old drum machines. Yes. Oh, actually, Brandon should probably have those. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, less shipping. Less shipping that yeah. needs to be done. Yes. That's true. Yep. That's true. Um, but yeah, so as we're getting ready to really uh, attack Bloodborne in earnest, we're doing kind of a kind of a weird episode where we're talking about the Dark Souls 2 comic uh, that came out here. And uh, mm-hmm. and then we're going to round out with just a little bit of like Q&A, just, you know, just fun and kind of stuff. Yeah, we're, we're, this is kind of, this is... Yeah, I'm under no illusion, or we're under no illusion that this is not like a space filling episode. Um, we would have covered the comic at some point anyway, mm-hmm. um, but we probably would have tacked it onto the scholar update. Yeah. Um, so since we couldn't do that though, and because we want a little Bloodborne time, in the meantime, we have both uh, beat Bloodborne. Um, however, there's still a lot that no one knows mm-hmm. out there. Like uh, this is not too spoilery, but like. I don't know about you, but I didn't run into a covenant until the end of the game, and I'm looking online, and there's a lot of question marks um, as far as those. So people don't really even know how to get to them yet. Like, we we need to wait for ourselves and the rest of the world to kind of catch up with the game. Yeah, we need to wait for the wiki scramble to settle down. Yeah, yeah, because right now it is is kind of a mess. So um, we're in the midst of doing that. We're in the midst of doing planning, um, lining up guests and the like, and we have some really awesome people. Um, this season, uh, a lot of new faces or voices, as it were. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Um, but in the meantime, grant us this indulgence and uh, hang out while we talk about Into the Light, um, <laughs> which is a Dark Souls comic book. Uh, it's written by Rob Williams and art by uh, Simon Colby. Rob Williams and Andy Ewington. Yes. Yes. And uh, this is an official, you know, from software endorsed and licensed kind of companion piece of media that came out mm-hmm. kind of alongside the game. Yeah, and I've never seen a copy in the wild. Um, every time I've looked for one on eBay, because I would like to, to own one, um, it is really expensive and ships from the UK, mm-hmm. which makes me wonder what the release was like for this. Yeah, And I couldn't find tons of information. Um, you can find PDFs of it online if you Google. Though, so it's fairly easy to get a hold of. Um, one of our uh, listeners, Dave Ashton, actually sent us uh, a link. Which was awesome. Yes, of him, and we're not doing this to pirate. Like I would, I would gladly pay this. Like if I could give from software some money for this, I would, uh, but I can't. Right. So, so here we are. Yeah, but this is uh, this is kind of meant. You know, there's a there's an afterword on this, kind of putting the end first to you know give a, a sense of what the flow of the Souls games is, which is you know failure and trial and error, uh, leading to uh, kind of hopefully the uh, the the grand satisfaction of success. And and that's what the comic tries to illustrate as well. Yeah. So, like, this comic is not uh, lore-heavy in any way. Um, it is not—I feel like I, I really have two minds of it. Um, yeah. It is a real missed opportunity. Like, I would, I kind of like this idea. You know, I learned nothing from Southland Tales. <laughs> I kind of like this idea of this multimedia, you know, kind of thing. And there being something in here that kind of shed some light. Mm-hmm. Uh, no pun intended on some of the the mysteries from the game, but really it is a a kind of a thesis statement and feels prepared to like get people into these games who maybe don't understand them. Mm-hmm. You know, that's kind of what I took away from it. Yeah, it's it's kind of a way to you know we we make fun of those cross media strategies, but this this feels a little bit more well advised than you know here's a here's a TV mini series coming out alongside it. Uh, yeah, it was to, at least lower in scope or, or narrower in scope. Yeah, as to be doable. Yeah, you so, know, 
and and I and I think that it's a it's a, it's a little bit of a missed opportunity. We'll get into the details about it, just because it does focus on the player character, and I don't think anybody ever says the you know I am so fascinated by this player character. It's not the you know it's not the interesting thing about uh, you know about these games, and you know the the the, the real opportunity would w- opportunity would be to focus on the world. It seems. Well, that, and that's one thing. So, like, if we were making a dream Dark Souls or Dark Souls 2 comic book, that's what I would want. Mm-hmm. However, like, one of the weird things about Dark Souls 2, and this kind of escaped us, like, when we talked about um, in our Scholar episode, we were kind of t- thinking about, like, dangling threads mm-hmm. in Dark Souls 2 that didn't get wrapped up. And at the time, I was having a hard time thinking of them, but I've thought up a couple. Um, one is I do think that the the whole uh, resolution with the Emerald Herald is a little unsatisfying. Yeah. Like, I get it, but I felt like she was going to have more importance. Uh, but two, like, one of the big differences between Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2 is that in Dark Souls 2, you are playing a character. Um, he is journeying for a curse. Like, he has this family that he's forgetting about. All that stuff in that intro. And this could have given some kind of background on that. Like, I was kind of hoping this would be like, oh, how did this guy get cursed? Mm-hmm. You know, that wouldn't have hurt. Um, because we do, like, you're right, that the player character is not that interesting and it has to be a little bit of a cipher. However... Um, this is a, a rare game in the series where there is a character and we do know some things about the character you're playing. Mm-hmm. Um, and this doesn't add to that. Right. Uh, really. Yeah. And so what we get is just kind of like a very small little, you know, slice, like one repetition or cycle as it goes mm-hmm. along. And this is, this is incredibly brief. This is a 24 page comic. Yeah. And, and it moves really quick. There's lots of action. Mm-hmm. Um, not a lot of dialogue. And what's there is not like, it's a little bit over dramatic and feels off tone to me. <laughs> That's the thing, right? Like, yeah. uh, uh, I never put words in the character's mouth, and so to see him talking about "I am truly cursed," yeah, <laughs> it's it, it, you're right. Like, it's it's putting a little bit more. I don't know if it's if, if it's down to that isn't the way that I the, the, what's going through my head when I'm playing the game, even though I'm mm-hmm. not role playing as a character or anything like that. But uh, but but it's it's more heavy handed, I think, than most of the other stuff, you know, in the game would have it be like there's a light touch that is used in a lot of the dialogue and a lot of the presentation when they when they see fit to use exposition. And here with the internal monologue, it definitely feels like it is uh, it is selling past the close in terms of the emotion. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a little bit too much, and like the so the characters, and this is, this is something that we've talked about before, but like I didn't really realize how weird it was until we kind of said it out loud here. Is that like Dark Souls? You entire like it is so you play no roles mm-hmm. in it. You know, you can say like in this game, like I'm a pyromancer. In this game, I'm going to go for the evil ending and do evil shit. But like, mm-hmm. you're not thinking about that in the game. You're just thinking about builds mm-hmm. and such. Um, whereas the worlds and NPCs are so well developed. You know, it, it's just kind of an interesting uh, contrast with other role-playing games. And this one, you know, there's a little bit of that, like a tiny little bit of world-building just in the fact that you do uh, interact with an NPC from the game, or the, the comic book does, um, which is Saldan, mm-hmm. um, the Crestfallen Warrior near uh, Majula. Yeah. Um, and then actually, something also about this makes me think that uh, it was, I mean, it would have had to because of comic production, been started really early in the development cycle. Um, one of the things is the enemies you face, um, early on when you're in kind of the basement, um, of the, uh, so one, you face an enemy that I can't, I don't recognize. Yeah. Um, I feel like might've been cut from the game Two, They show you facing a turtle knight and a germ at the same time. Mm-hmm. I keep saying you, which is not, not the case, <laughs> but there's a part where he kind of thinks about what he's going to deal with. And I remember that preview footage of the germ throwing the ax mm-hmm. in the uh, forest of fallen giants. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, you know, at some point those guys were there. Yeah, maybe this is based on that, especially given what we know from the from from the translations of the design works, uh, you know, yes, book and interview that have trickled out so far. Right. Like this definitely does feel like it, it springs from a snapshot of a game we never saw. Yep. And and what you might be, you know, if you're wondering why we're not doing the design works thing, um, they were re- released another installment of it, but there's still a fourth installment. So we're going to tack that onto the Scholar mm-hmm. episode. Um, I think I mentioned this in the last episode, but it has been confirmed if you own uh, Dark Souls 2 for PC, the Scholar of the First Sin redo is 20 bucks. Yeah. Which I think is pretty reasonable. Yep. Um, so. There's new bosses and shit. Like I was, I played it at uh, that Namco event and there's a gigantic dragon and <laughs> I had Star of Flame. So, yeah, I definitely yeah. need to. Uh, is that out yet? Like I checked it. I've been, no, I've been looking for it so. all day. It was supposed to come out today as of when, as of when we're recording, but uh, oh, no, no dice. I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah, I, April, didn't think, April, I thought it was a little bit later. April 1st. Okay. And, unless they's goofing. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a real weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, no, no, this thing you want to buy isn't coming out yet. 
Um, that's that whole thing was just an April Fool's joke. That whole event I went to, <laughs> all that, all those enemy placements. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna sink some time into that um, and, and check it out. I don't know where it will fit in our season, mm -hmm. but we'll cover the design works in that a little bit later. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about uh, just we don't think we have to go quite scene by scene, watch out for fireball style, but let's talk about what happens in the comic. Yeah, it's the arc. So we it's it's kind of un, you know pinned to this monologue that's running through the main character's head and it's dwelling on the idea of a curse, right? So we see him walking into, you know, a forest and drank lake, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh he ultimately ends up uh you know, he finds a bonfire that Salden's sitting at and uh Salden gives him some some advice. Um, you know, that that's pretty bleak mm -hmm. and uh crestfallen even yeah. uh, where it's like, you know, you must have a good reason to be here. This is garbage. And he says he seeks uh, a cure for the curse, which is in line with what we, we know. Mm -hmm. And there's kind of a nice panel um, where it's like, you seek hope here. And instead of showing monsters or anything, it's just this like foreboding forest mm -hmm. around them. Yeah. That's um, one of the best compositions in this thing. Yeah. Yeah. And anyway, we should probably, I mean, maybe at the end, we'll talk about the art in general. Mm-hmm. Because it's, I'm kind of in the world of comics. I don't know who either of these people are. Right. Um, so this is, I've not seen this before. Yeah. But when our main character meets Salden and says, hey, you know, what's going on up here? Salden is clinging to the bonfire and he says that, you know, this kind of darkness, no sword will cut through only the, you know, only the comforting flame can, mm -hmm. uh, you know, can, can fix that. And the main character kind of shrugs him off and looks down on him for clinging to safety. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Salden says, hey, if you hang out, um, I will teach you about the game. And your guy goes, huh, maybe <laughs> your blade can't slice the darkness, which is a dumb line and doesn't sound cool. Um, but then he say, calls him crestfallen and heads out. And then uh, as he leaves, Salden is surrounded by the ghost of previous players right. and uh, people who have gone off the and, uh, and died. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's venturing in to what is quite apparently the forest of fallen giants. Yep. And he fights this boss who I can't find an analog for um, <laughs> in the actual game, who kind of just looks like a big berserker ogre thing. Yeah, he's got like a flail. And he's asking like, hey, if I'm truly cursed, then what crimes did these guys commit? Saying, you know, I'm probably reflecting on whether it's not so bad or, you know, how how terrible truly is this land? Yep. Um, so he fights that guy. Um, you know, kind of continues through, runs into some cool spooky skeletons. <laughs> and... Uh, ultimately runs into the turtle knight, which, um, again, that made me think he also specifically calls out needing a torch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so this is very much that trailer. Yep. Um, thing. It's, you know, it's, it, it's a scene from that. All they're missing is the shy guys. And I, I love how he, he says, ha flame. That is for, that is for weaklings and blackguards. And then immediately, yeah. Ooh, I shall not venture forth without a torch. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's an idiot. <laughs> the chosen undead of this comic book sucks. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, turtle light comes up, and fucks him up. Yeah. Like, uh, he, you know, he, he kind of uh, holds his own, but uh, gets roughed up mm -hmm. pretty bad. Yeah. And this leaves him vulnerable to uh, another enemy that I don't quite know what it is, is like a phantom kind of guy, right? Like a like a ghost, like a swordy ghost. Yeah. And it breaks his sword. The, the, the turtle knight does. So he is in a bad position. Like things are just not going his way. Yes. Yeah, he's overconfident, as you should not be. Mm -hmm. um, a bunch of skeletons kind of rise up around him. Um, which are just the the hollowed soldiers, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, but they kind of just watch him. He doesn't fight them, which is weird. Yeah. Uh, and continues in and runs into a dragon um, that, again, uh, I don't recognize this dragon. Mm -hmm. um, it looks a little bit like the dragon god from from Demon Souls. It does, yeah. Like the rows structure. of teeth and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he gets his ass handed to him by the dragon. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. <laughs> He's screaming. So his internal monologue says, hope has no place here. But his speech bubble is, ah! is ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> hope has no place here. Ah! Ah! <laughs> um, Earn this. Yeah. And that's when the, the phantom kind of comes in, which I think is actually meant to be an invader. Yeah. That's what I uh, thought too. Yeah. Who just fucks him up mm -hmm. and, uh, and makes him near death. Um, he doesn't actually die, but he walks back to the the bonfire. Right, and, and uh, uh, you know he talks to Salden, and 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 they say, you know, and in, in my last moments, you know, do you, do you know what you must do? And he starts scrawling a message on the ground next to the uh, next to the bonfire. Yes, because yeah. previously he'd seen a message um, that, uh, and there's just like, oh, those are people who are confident like you, mm -hmm. um, but they done fucked up. And then uh, after he does so, he wakes up hale and hearty. 
<laughs> and Sullivan says, you know, will you listen to me this time? Yeah. Which I wish I had ended there without him saying, I will. <laughs> yeah. I will. <laughs> leave leave, <laughs> like leave it on a nice, like, wry <laughs> note as opposed to giving him an opportunity to get the last word and sound like a badass. Yeah. And then, and then there's literally uh, from software like stating the point of the comic, stating the thesis, yeah. which yeah. Uh, doesn't seem like they're kind of arguing from a point of uh, kind of like artistic or story strength there to say, here's what no. I to, to step out and say. So, well, what did we learn here today? Let's have a rap it's, session. It is because um, when that design works interview, what's what's there that's interesting is like they talk about the things they wanted to do but didn't do because they knew a lot of new people or they thought a lot of new people would come to the series. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't done any research to that effect, but I'm curious as to how many people just started Dark Souls with Dark Souls 2. Um, it's possible. Like it started, you know, cross platform right away, um, more or less. And stuff. So it's possible people just got into a Dark Souls too, but they there is like a an overwhelming uh, sense that they're trying to make this beginner friendly, mm-hmm. and this comic kind of spells that out, and then also some of the design decisions in the game. Yeah, uh, spell do, that out as well. Do we know how this was distributed? I don't sure. know. Yeah, like I could see it as like a pre order gift or something like that, but uh, I don't know how many new people would be pre ordering the game, right? Yeah, yeah, that would be it'd be fans of of the game mm-hmm. who would do so. So I really, I really don't know. And it, it's, um, I didn't do tons of research, so it's probably you know if anybody out there knows, feel free to to write in. Um, the uh, as as uh, evidenced by the fact that we're even doing this episode, we're both kind of under the gun um, with stuff. So mm-hmm. apologize for not doing due diligence as far as research on um, that goes. Um, but all in all, like it is a weird product. Like I think that. If I didn't know anything about Souls, so here, here's a question. Like, if you didn't know anything about Souls and someone just handed you this comic, what would you come away as far as, like, interest level goes? This would feel... What's it, it one way or another? So the, the the ending would definitely come as kind of a twist, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if, if this was not attached to something that I knew was a video game, um, mm-hmm. then that would probably carry a little bit more weight to me. Like, oh, apparently this is a world where people come back and can learn. But that's kind of a weird intersection between game and story, which yeah. you know, I, I feel like we 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 emphasize that in our discussion, kind of in fits and bursts, and then forget that the dying and being reborn and coming back and you know getting stronger is kind of built in and baked in as part of the story. But outside of the context of a of of of, of a video game, that either takes on a bunch more significance or feels like a goofy worlds of power conceit. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Like the idea, like that's it is a cool idea for a comic. Mm-hmm. Where like nobody can die and you can you know groundhog day it, but you have to die every time. Like that's pretty cool. Um, but as a, if again, like you said, like if you know it's a video game, that's just kind of video games mm-hmm. um, in a way. Like you always have extra lives, even though it is played with in uh, in Souls. And God help us, how we're going to deal with that in Bloodborne? Because <laughs> I still don't know. Like I mean, there are tons of coffins with locks on the outside, but I didn't realize <laughs> people were coming back to life in this world. I still don't exactly get that. So yeah. um, that will take some some time, I guess, to suss out. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's such a part of this, but like, I almost would have expected like, like if they would, I wish they'd emphasize something other than like the combat and you will die kind of thing. Like it, it sounds like a retread a little bit of like the crones speech Mm -hmm. in the beginning of the game. Yeah. You know? A little bit. And I think that, you know, even just not knowing what's special about this world or special about the story that they're trying to tell or the themes that they're trying to get across, um, this very surface level analysis kind of just makes it look like a generic fantasy comic. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it, and it's, it doesn't help that it's like in the most generic fantasy area of the game, mm-hmm. you know, uh, as far as visual aesthetic. And it's not helped by the art, which is like, uh, it's black and white. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is, uh, it reminds me of like, old kind of pre-code horror comics yeah i have like an anthology of like old horror you know tales from the crypt and tomb from the deep and deep from the crypt and <laughs> crypt of the doom and, and and all those things those things and uh it reminds me of that in a way that i kind of like like just really high contrast like really deep blacks yeah. um you know not very much shade to it but it washes over detail mm-hmm. um in this to where there's nothing about the design of the area or enemies that comes across, right. right? Like the turtle knight, which is the, you know, the most unique enemy that he fights in the comic mm-hmm. um, is not shown as a big lumbering doofus. He's shown as like pretty cool. You know, he just looks like a big guy, mm-hmm. like a big strong guy. His proportions are not as turtle like, <laughs> and there's no sense of his movement or anything like the way that from will kind of get across that 
a sense of characterization and 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 uh, menace through movement. Yeah, um, all that ex- doesn't exist. And like, I wonder if the artist was familiar with it, like seen it in motion um, and seen the world, or if he was just kind of told about it. Yeah, I could totally see, especially if this was early on, uh, mm-hmm. working off of concept and thinking that 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 particular enemy was going to move in a different way. Yeah. 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 You know, um, and and just sand off the edges. You know, he just mm-hmm. kind of like took off the kinds of things that makes that kind of a unique and cool looking enemy and, and not even, you know, this is if you have to, you know, they wanted to use this uh, first area of the game, probably not just because it was done and, and developed early, but also because they wanted to avoid spoilers, but it's not the area of the game with the most unique enemies in it. Um, you know, so if you're not going to even show something later, you know, like show me a giant basilisk, mm-hmm. you know, in this, and that would have got across this idea of this kind of offbeat, but still menacing world, you know, better than this. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And so I think that, you know, I'm, I'm fine with, you know, black and white comics specifically, you know, I think Berserk and The Walking Dead do very, a very good job at that for different reasons, right? Mm-hmm. Berserk, because it's really good at getting motion across, um, mm-hmm. you know, with poses and lines and things like that. Um, and The Walking Dead, because it focuses a lot on expression, like The Walking Dead is mostly people talking to each other and being mm-hmm. surprised at what they say, you know, yeah. um, here, I kind of feel like it's crying out for color not just because um, a lot of the design and personality and atmosphere in Dark Souls comes through in the in, in the color choices that they make, I feel like, I feel like that's kind of a strength of this world and of and, and of the and of the game's aesthetic, uh, but also because my eye really doesn't know where to go on this because there's no there's no expression and there's not really like a clear line of motion even in the yeah. fight scenes for as action heavy as this is, and so my eye was kind of looking for something to latch onto. Um, in a in, in, in a way that kind of left me wanting and kind of was confusing in certain steps, especially because they're cramming so much onto a given page. Yeah, yeah. The, the fight scenes are very strangely stiff. Um, there's not a good sense of motion in, in more or less anything that he does. Um, like, it's not like the artist is a bad kind of, uh, you know, bad at drawing figures. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that this guy's, you know, somewhat talented, but it doesn't, it doesn't get across, like you said, it doesn't get across anything that I wanted to get across. Also, like, about color, like, this was a huge missed opportunity because the whole kind of thing about this is this idea of the light versus the dark. It's in the title. He goes to the bonfire. You could have shown that as, like, really warm and safe and had him go into the darkness. You could have had him light the torch and have it be this minor, like, respite mm-hmm. from from the surrounding darkness and, and played with that as it flickered, you know, as he fought. Yeah. There's a lot of opportunities there. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're just, you know, farted upon. Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it ultimately comes down to like a pacing issue, and I know that I'm kind of being shitty and you know Monday morning quarterbacking it, but uh, but yeah, it, I I can't tell if they're trying to portray too much or too little, or not yeah. leaving enough space for, uh, for 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 things that they you know that that kind of require a breath. Right. Well, well, quite honestly, like he very like it's it's pr- probable that he was just under mandate from people who had no idea how to do comic storytelling. Oh, yeah. You know, like it, it's it's almost guaranteed that someone just said, hey, like. You know, these are the the monsters you can work with. This is what has to happen. Stretch this to 22 pages. Yeah. You know, like in a weird way, like they're showing plenty, just not like two little fighty encounters happen. Mm -hmm. And like there's someone had to write it in a game where there's like so little dialogue Mm -hmm. and someone needed to draw it in a game where like it is 100 percent about this kinetic movement. Um, as opposed to still images, like still images from the Souls games can look very beautiful. But like even just as recently as Bloodborne, like the the way everything moves and the way it looks when you're moving around it makes a world of difference. Yeah. Like it's 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 insane how much better the game looks when you're actually traversing it. Um yeah, so it is I think is like if you're a Souls completist it's worth taking a look at. It's not particularly good. Um yeah. So yeah, I I pretty much agree with you there. It's it's an interesting curiosity. Um, but, uh, uh, it, it is, uh, something that is kind of not, not befitting the experience just because it is such a good video game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and this is not to say that I don't think a good piece of visual art or comic could be made of the mm-hmm. Souls universe, but I would want it to be not made as a marketing yeah. product specifically. Like, I think mm-hmm. it would actually be a pretty neat thing to do and I could dig it, mm-hmm. but it's not this. Yeah. So with all due respect to the creators, again, I, I'm sure they're under constraints but yep. uh not great 
Let us uh, let's move on to some discussion prompts. Yeah, so we put out a call for just kind of some Q and A's. Like let's let's uh, let our let, let our feet out. You know, just uh, let's wrap with you guys. Yeah, let's just turn this chair around and stand and and turn around our hat at the same time. So, so what majors are you guys thinking about? Yeah, you know, so let's have a yeah. frank discussion about sexuality. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever notice how uh, the the lady reproductive system um, in charts looks like a desert skull head? Yeah, like a, like a like cow's a, head. Yeah, it's weird, right? Yeah, um, you guys yeah. ever notice that? It's weird, huh? Yeah, we've had a lot All of fun right. here today. It's a good, good wrap with you guys. <laughs> um, stick Late. your dick in there if you want to, Late or not. Skulls. Yeah, it's up to you. Yeah, yeah, it's up to you. <laughs> Yeah. Both kinds are fine. All <laughs> kinds are fine. Not both. All yeah. kinds. <laughs> so we're, we're looking at this here. Uh, we're, we're not going to uh, we're not going to uh, kind of spoil anything with Bloodborne on this, but there may be some kind of late game varsity level discussion of Dark, Dark Souls 1 and 2. Uh, just yes. kind of getting people ready for any kind of spoilers that may be out there. Uh, we have James who wrote in via the contact form saying the primordial serpents Frampt and Cath. Serpent number five. Um, they're, they're, they're a very mysterious group of characters. Item descriptions talk about them being uh, incomplete dragons. Uh, they all seem to have some kind of ulterior motive, even perhaps against each other. What were they doing post Dark Souls? They are one of the uh, few creatures in the game you cannot kill, so it is very likely that they survived. The only reference to them that I can think is those strange statues. So overall, where are the serpents? Or at least, what do you think they are doing? Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, chilling out, hanging. I, I actually think that there's a good chance that they are gone mm -hmm. by this point. Um, be, since Dark Souls 2, uh, a big part of that plot is dealing with um, kind of reconstructing these dragons mm -hmm. and bringing them back. Um, if the dragons died out who are also known to be immortal, um, there's no reason the serpents couldn't have died out as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where I'm at. Yeah. With it. Like they're just they're just long gone because it's been generations and generations. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, um uh, what, what are we looking at here? If you betray one of them, via the it, it will go away, right? Like it will it will take its ball and go home, and you are working solely for the uh the the, the drive for either Frampt or Cath, right? Mm -hmm. But it's shown at the end that there are like multiple of them. So it's not just it's not just the two of them. And I think that what you said, Gary, is that it's just very, very likely that they are, uh, you know, not really around anymore. Yeah, they, they could have. And the, the statues that you're mentioning don't have their heads, which mm -hmm. some people have kind of uh, supposed means that, you know, they've been beheaded kind of in, in effigy, um, you know, which would make sense if, uh, you know, events continued on in either ending of Dark Souls 1 um, and the chosen undead uh, kind of got sick of their shit, you mm -hmm. know. Like, it could be possible that they were hunted for being uh, deceitful the same way the dragons were hunted, uh, you know, just because there was a war. Like, because we know Kath uh, attempted Elysial, uh, Elysial, yeah, yeah. Into, uh, uh, into the abyss yeah. and the such. So it's possible people just got sick of it <laughs> and, just, uh, and just hunted those guys down. There are, there are presumably lots of them, though, too. Like, we run into one that wants you to link the fire and the one that made it wants you not to. But there's mm -hmm. probably one out there that, like, just wants you to farm hollows until you're 9999. <laughs> and, and another one that just wants you to, you know, turn off the game and, and go mm -hmm. play, I don't know, uh, Call of Duty. Maybe, maybe the maybe the primordial serpents are just expressions of want, and maybe they yeah. uh, they're, they're, there's there's a primordial serpent that's there. Maybe you're not even seeing them. It's just a way for your hollowed mind to justify making the decision that you're going to make. Sure. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> if they if they it would be an interesting thing if they do Dark Souls three, based on our kind of interpretation of where we landed with the there is no path ending, mm -hmm. um, which makes me want Dark Souls three to be a, a weird different thing. Mm -hmm. If they do that. I would be interested to see if these guys come back in any sense. Um, because at that point, if you take the there is no path ending of Dark Souls 3, you're rejecting both of the kind of binaries that the serpent set up. Yeah. And having them kind of come back to try to convince you or be a, a temptation mm -hmm. you know, for you, which is something that they've done in the past, yeah. um, would be interesting to me. Yeah. But that would be kind of a, a, a change in tone for them to treat one ending as more canonical than the other. Yeah. Yeah, that would be like it, it's almost like you don't have to do a Dark Souls three. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't it doesn't demand a sequel. Um, but if it does have a sequel, you have to account for the fact that it can't just be another cycle. Right. You know, or it can't. It has to have a little bit more to it. Yeah. So. 
Uh, that actually leads into the next question here. Sean, via contact, says, you guys mentioned it, mentioned it a couple of times, but I'm not sure you've gone deep on it. Do you think there's a canon ending to Dark Souls 1? Having played both games three times now, I'm not sure where I come down. But if I had to guess, it feels like the dark ending is the canon ending, given the Daughters of Manus are the main plot thread in Dark Souls 2. Though I've done a little, uh, though I've done, done little research outside the show, uh, it's just something that struck me. Um, I... Uh... I don't think there is Mm -hmm. um, because of Dark Souls 2. Right. Like, I think that the the whole, the, my reading on the ending of Dark Souls 2 and the existence of Dark Souls 2 is that it doesn't matter. They both lead to the same, to the same faded ember state. Yep. So I don't think there is a canon. Like, it eventually will just kind of reboard and drama and game and kind of uh, this choice point comes when the fire is about to fade. But even if you decide to embrace the Age of Dark, it will kind of be reborn mm-hmm. again. And that's, um, that's, that's what I think. That's kind of something sequels do anyway, right? Is, yeah. is, is minimize the events of the previous one, either by escalating beyond it or uh, trying mm-hmm. to, trying to like for the purposes of drama or tell its own story, disregard or minimize what was happening there. So what was initially presented as a world saving or world destroying decision was really only a, uh, you know, a notch, uh, you know, one or two notches in either direction towards this kind of grand tug of war that's happening between, you know, flame and dark. Yeah. Which I, I like because it is, it is bleak no matter what, <laughs> like the fact that like you can't, uh, you know, that plays into the way dark souls feels to me, you know, mm-hmm. like you can make a difference for a short amount of time. Yeah. Um, but we've talked about that quite a bit. It's interesting the way, cause you, we talk about uh, sequels distancing themselves. Um, one of the ways they do that is just playing with time. Mm-hmm. And you can definitely see Dark Souls 2 doing that. Like you look at a, like something like Fallout 1 and Fallout 2, um, you know, there's not the things that have to happen are canonical in Fallout 2, but they make it, you know, a generation or two later. Um, Dark Souls 2 makes it uncounted generations later, you know, so like the, the there's so much Vaseline on the lens that um, there has to be almost nothing that's canon from the first one. Right. You know, it's not required to be canon. Yeah. So I I won't canonize one. Like I have like I I like both those endings because they tell different kind of things mm-hmm. to me, but I'm also into the idea that neither of them ultimately matters. Yeah. And so it gets into is it worthwhile to make a sequel at all aside from making a game in the same milieu? Right. And and that's what I was I definitely felt that way about Dark Souls 2 up kind of until they did the scholar patch. Mm-hmm. And so like actually, you know, and that's what is kind of impressive to me and like I feel like I'm fawning over something that may have been more of an afterthought, mm-hmm. but it's also possible like, you know, that it it's they they realize this too and again we talked about that at length like allow people to make their mistakes and correct them. But the idea that like, you know, we can, if if our thesis is that it doesn't matter, like the world is going to continually do this, mm-hmm. um, if you do one of two actions until there's a third can't like party, there is no reason really for a sequel other mm-hmm. than just to explore new worlds. Yeah, or or, or um, explore like new micro stories, and that's one level that we praise Dark Souls Two for, which is you know even though we are kind of exploring these disparate worlds within this world the different kingdoms and the different kind of personal stories that are there like that, like that is where the action and the meat is found. And I think that yeah. it depends on what you prefer. Like, are you going to be dissatisfied if the, if the needle isn't really moved on the grand overarching kind of like meta narrative. And, and to be clear, like as much as I, you know, I love Bloodborne and how it's doing something different. Um, and I do have, you know, Dark Souls 2 is imperfect. I would gladly take another game if it was like, I, I feel like they have to do something different for the grand story. But if they were just like, nope, we're going to do another cycle with here's another dozen like kingdoms and interesting little stories and characters to explore. Mm -hmm. I would still play it. Like, do I think it would be better? No. Do I think it's a good move? Not necessarily, but like I'm into that structure enough to, to Mm -hmm. follow it wherever it goes. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's, it's kind of funny because are you looking at kind of inter like, you know, like, like stories that are uh, kind of interesting on like an inter level or an intra level between the two of them or just kind of mixed up and in between. And, uh, you know, I I guess, I guess the platonic ideal of what, you know, dark souls two ended up kind of probably accidentally succeeding at is what we're looking for in a lot of games, which is where is the game equivalent of the short story collection, like outside of 400 days or whatever. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see here. I don't want to leave Dark Souls 2 just yet, so why don't we uh, jump over to Facebook. Jeremy Greer asks, will either of you be purchasing the next-gen, quote-unquote, version of Dark Souls 2? I was thinking hard about picking it up on PS4, but now that Bloodborne is out, I'll probably wait for a while. Um, yeah. 
one hundred percent. Yep, I'm I'm interested in it. It's going to do a bunch of weird shit, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, and I I like Dark Souls too a lot. So yeah, yep, I'm going to do it. And for the twenty dollars, it really seems to make just sense to 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 go after it. And because we're eventually going to have to cover it for the show, um, you know, that's kind of an obvious reason to go for it. But I'm going to jump on it with gusto here because I want to play it and see what's different as soon as possible. You know, yeah, me me too. And also, it's going to be kind of nice to go back to something so familiar. <laughs> Um, and easier <laughs> after being so completely unmoored. Yeah. Being totally unmoored and just having the floor wiped with me. Like, uh, this is not a spoiler thing, but I am doing uh, chalice dungeons mm-hmm. now in my new game plus character and they start, uh, recycling bosses, um, and using some bosses again in ways that are interesting and change the boss fights and completely. Mm-hmm. Um, and I am stuck on a boss I was stuck on when I first went through in a way that like, like I was like, oh, I, I beat this guy. Oh, like make it a smaller arena that's laid out in a different way. And I'm totally fucked again. <laughs> and it's very thoughtful. And it just like, that's what I was doing, you know, last night um, and got very frustrated. And now it's like, mm-hmm. man, I just want to like hammer on, you know, Dragon Rider and see what happens. Like, you know, and if I would love it if like that was really hard now again, too. But uh, I do. I want something that's I, I need to win. Mm-hmm. damn it <laughs> well you know so. you, you got to go out there and uh, slay a couple of rats right exactly yeah yep. and so I, i'm kind of looking for like the for, from everything that i've heard and read and just you know heard from you even the you know the, the they they add enough wrinkles to make the next gen version of this uh you know a kind of a more difficult more varied uh experience and so looking at that as kind of a happy medium between the two of them and i'm com- i'm coming off of bloodborne actually with like with a little bit of wind in my sails Right. Like I feel I feel very confident in my abilities in a way that I otherwise would not have just because, you know, by the end of that, I don't know if it's uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about the the difficulty or the way that it may or may Mm -hmm. not change. But um, but I feel pretty good. And I kind of want to go back and get that different experience of it, because we've said over and over again, if there's new souls, we're going to be we're going to be down for it and uh, And, establish a new relationship. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm not giving up on Bloodborne either. Like mm-hmm. somebody, because our first impression thing came out and like somebody on Twitter was like, I can't even tell if you guys like Bloodborne. And somebody <laughs> on some message board said we were whiny. Uh, um, God damn it. Are, like, do we just always Google for that? Because I saw that too. Yeah. I, well, we have, we're ego, ego babies. Like we, we <laughs> talked about our ego, our, our e- we're, the, we're the infant of infant, infant of infinite ego boss. <laughs> um, so, but, which is fine. Like it was a fair criticism. Mm-hmm. Um, but now that I can say uh, completely now that I finished it, like I love Bloodborne. Yeah. Like it's great. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Um, there's, there's some mechanical things I don't love about it, but it is top fucking tier. Like mm-hmm. I, I love it and I'm super excited to talk about it Yeah, um, at length for, you know, yeah. a year and change probably. <laughs> so <laughs> for sure. And, you know, just because I have reservations and I'm not uh, uh, opposed to expressing them doesn't mean that I don't love it. So that's, uh, yeah. You know, we're 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 treating it uh, with with love and care. I hope, and I hope that comes through. Yeah, well, like part of uh, one of that the reaction always are, it reminds me of that. Like, I can't believe that Twilight Princess got a, you know, an eight, like eight point eight or whatever that that controversy was. Yeah. Um, it struck me as that. Like, it's like I'm not. I would still. It's still a wonderful game. Like I've been evangelizing about it constantly. Um, but it is, uh, you know, just having some reservations does not invalidate my overwhelming goodwill. Yeah, um, towards it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so yeah, we're, I'm picking up Scholar, and if it is out today as it's supposed to be, I'll probably get it tonight and play a little bit tonight. Yeah, me too. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so we have another question here from uh, from Luke uh, via the contact form, and uh, I'm going to cut you a little bit short just because it's a it's a long story that leads to a question. But he, you know, mm-hmm. offers us praise and then uh, kind of talks about how Bloodborne, you know, kind of just takes and advances his relationship with these games. Mm-hmm. You know, by changing it, kind of echoing, you know, some of the stuff we've said, even within the same episode. Uh, but it finishes out by, you know, he finishes out by asking, how has your relationship with the series changed over the years? And how big of a part of that was doing this show? Oh, that, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it. I mean, I would say it's changed a lot. Like I I, lo- I play the game different, differently. Like I, I pay attention to different things. I'm, I'm more present. I read, I was always going to read item descriptions, but I read even more item descriptions now. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. I, I didn't take notes on my first playthrough of Dark Souls 2, or even my second. And, you know, just kind of, you know, I, I guess I forget about it, but Dark Souls, the first, came out right around the time we started the network. Like, it came out two two months after after we started Watch Out for Fireballs, right? You know? 
And so mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of weird how that has kind of come up. And just over the course of the, what is it, four or so years we've been doing this now, at, at least together, these these kinds of shows, uh, it, uh, my relationship with every game has changed. Um, just in terms of, like you said, not just what I'm paying attention to, but the degree to which I'm doing it and the, and the degree to which I'm trying to capture and synthesize opinions on the fly. Yeah. And, um, you know, crystallize and kind of come up with things to say and opinions to, you know, bring to bear about this and hopefully uh, trying to sound cogent. And that's just kind of a, a different process of, of, di- of digestion, um, I think. Yeah. And I also I spend a lot more time uh, researching and looking up other people's things mm. online. Like that's something I would do anyway, but I do it a lot more now. Like immediately after I, the credits rolled on Bloodborne, I went online to try to figure out the stuff I couldn't figure out, <laughs> you know, um, and see what other people were thinking and find other people's lore theories. Like I had my own, I had my own sense of what had happened and how these things work. But like that part has changed. Like I think if I wasn't doing the show, um, I wouldn't have the level of touch and contact I do with the community and the collaborative part of the Souls games. As far as interpretation, like that's something like um, somebody on Twitter and I can't remember who it was, um, was kind of bad mouthing Bloodborne, not one of our like my followers, but just somebody who I follow and uh, and was just calling it uh, kind of like this shallow dude kill stuff game. And I was trying to like in 140 characters, how do I express that? You know, this actually like I consume this game in a different way than I consume any other game Mm -hmm. because it's me and hundreds of people who are collaborating to take it apart. Mm -hmm. piece by piece you know like that doesn't happen and because of our position in the show um i can contribute to that in a way that i couldn't before right so that's probably the biggest difference i would say like i'm not passive i'm active in that you know deconstruction process yeah and it's not like a sense of authority it's a sense of responsibility right because we have to show up and we have to hopefully sound intelligent you know it's up to it's up to each individual listener to figure out if we're successful at that but um you know Paying attention is a wonderful game mechanic, um, and it's a wonderful way to change the way that you approach this hobby. Yeah, and even you know, even as far as like a response, we don't have a responsibility to be right or necessarily sound a certain way, but we do have a like we value uh, you guys who listen to us. I know you know we know that um, you know there's a certain amount of due diligence to have in, and the it's it's a two way street. Like it has been now that I've beaten Bloodborne, I can actually start reading posts on our Facebook wall. Mm-hmm. Again, like it has been, it's been joyous to have people uh, bring things to our attention mm-hmm. and stuff like that is, it is uh, something that we try to do because we know you guys are doing it too. Mm-hmm. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's changed it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but in, in entirely positive ways, other than the fact that like I had to play Bloodborne slightly faster than maybe I would have. Right. Um, and I had to read this comic, which I like, <laughs> that's not true. I would have read the comic anyway. Yeah. But, like, cause it was like, it was like a 10 minute commitment. It was fine. Yeah. It was fine. I'll never have those 10 minutes back. <laughs> if I die 10 minutes before like winning the lottery, it, it wouldn't matter, actually. It's anyway, on your so. hand, Mr. Ewing, or whatever it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's on your hands, Patrick Ewing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so Luke has kind of a bonus question here. Which Souls world would you least hate to be transported to, and what podcast would you record there? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, boy, could, least could, want to be transported to. Uh, uh, what would you least hate to be transported. Oh, what I, I most want to. Yes. So, um, um, can, can I lead with that? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. Oh, Drang Lake. Take lead. <laughs> Drang Lake. Like, yeah. You just, just post up in Majula, you know, there oh, on the sure. coast. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, <laughs> clear the skeletons out of that spooky mansion, uh, uh, hunker down for some good reading, throw all your shit in the pit. Yeah. <laughs> you, can just, yeah. you can just go out there one day and, and just be like hanging your butthole over yeah. the pit and just dropping waste. Yep. <laughs> And, <laughs> and, just, like, and just have passersby come through like Salden. Eventually he cheers up and he seems like a solid bro. Yeah. Everybody comes by. You just wait for a chosen and dead to go make you some friends. Yeah. <laughs> and just like hang out. And the, uh, what is it? The, um, Cl- Cloran seems, uh, you know, DTF down to fortify <laughs> my equipment. Yep. And, uh, and I would, I would appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the name of the pyromancer lady? She seems really nice. A little bit. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 You know. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's a, that's a good answer. Yeah, that would um, be mine. Also, I really like the rocky beach. The rocky oh, yeah, beach. It's, it's, beautiful. it's a picture X, you know. You know yeah. There's there's tons of those in Oregon. That's where we do game retreat mm-hmm. every year. The the Ben Entertainment Entertainment <laughs> Nexus that we do every year. And then the uh like I, I'll go there with, with Elizabeth and stuff. So there there's really Majula esque mm. little seaside villages about an hour and a half away. 
Um, yeah, I was initially before you said that and, and reminded me of Majula. Um, mm-hmm. I was going to say the Bloodborne world because most of those people like just kind of hang out in their house. Um, <laughs> For a reason, though. End, yeah, exactly. And it doesn't end well. Um, <laughs> I, that's kind of, you know, mild spoiler, I guess. So I, that was, you know, that was my initial thought, but I was going to think better of it. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely not Dark Souls or, or definitely not Demon Souls. I think Demon Souls is super bleak. Yeah. Um, yeah. Majula, I think you're right. Mm-hmm. Majula. Yeah. Like it might be cool to hang out on the, the, the Shrine of Storms or whatever, but just still so hostile. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it would like it would be nice. It'd probably be windy and cold, mm-hmm. and then you would just get speared <laughs> constantly. Whereas like nobody ever gets speared in Majula. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I want like a Majula, like a, a Hawaiian style Majula t shirt, like it's just like a like a pretty sun kissed uh, type of font. Vacation in beautiful Majula. <laughs> yeah, you could do do a timeshare in one of the one of the half built shacks. Yeah. Yeah, and well, and eventually you can make your way up into that mansion. And like, I would be roommates with a uh, with a cartographer with Kale. Yeah, like he seems like a nice guy, and he never he's never home. It's like, oh, my roommate's never home. <laughs> he's 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 always digging. Yeah, that's the only good roommate is a roommate who's never around. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Let's move and on. What podcast will we start there? Oh yeah, that's um, a yeah probably uh, a really really in depth version of Bonfireside Chat. <laughs> <laughs> like, where, a, like an actual <laughs> travel guide yeah like where we just you know people just travel through and we just ask them like you know uh, oh so what's this pit like if you actually no i just shit in there i don't go down there yeah. what's it like if you actually walk around in my shit though that's interesting <laughs> there's things Whoa. that spit poison at you cool yeah um, <laughs> Wait a minute, well, my, my shit did that to that whole society yeah huh, huh yeah oh well <laughs> to, to, to read a book to just do like, like so so you would you would set up home base in majula but you do like a huel hauser-esque like tour <laughs> yeah. well golly what are all these frogs up here well, this is fascinating <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did that you hellhound just me? eat did that hellhound just eat an avocado <laughs> <laughs> you mean to tell me this castle is abandoned by all but the fiercest knights <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Would you hold still, sir? I'm trying to check my hair. Yeah. You got that big shield there. Yeah. Fascinating. <laughs> you mean to tell me that this knight has a face on the back of his face? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, golly, that's a big bull statue. What's up in there, you think? Yeah, that would that would be that's what we have to do. <laughs> that's what we have to do, both doing that voice. Yeah, Dr- Drang Lake's gold is what we call it. <laughs> it's another bit of Drang Lake's gold. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Uh, so yes, that is, that is absolutely the show we would do. Yeah, and it's a shame that we don't have sketches on this show. And it would be intolerable. Oh yeah, nobody would listen. Like it would be great initially, mm-hmm. but boy, oh boy, yeah so Mm -hmm. let's let's do a little bit of bloodborne stuff here uh we got a we got a message from sharon here writing in uh saying although this could just be a coincidence or a secret double meaning the symbol seen on the bold hunter's mark and on the cover of the official guide could be a monogram of the word blood this is regarding bloodborne uh specifically the hunter's mark which is kind of the stand-in for the uh for the for the dark sign this is hard to get across we'll put this link in the notes but somebody on Mm -hmm. reddit was uh was was or imger was kind of enough to uh to put this in take a look there but you can see you're able to with an outline on that kind of uh like big dipper like design spell the word blood with the different mm-hmm. shapes like a constellation yeah i i could see it being intentional the game sure does like its blood yeah like man so, t- t- talk about blood a lot <laughs> that's something that we didn't really talk about uh in the in the first impressions i'm super impressed with the way that like blood and fluid stick around on clothing oh yeah yeah, yeah that, that's that's wonderful. Yeah. And it just it sprays everywhere. Like every fight is just a fucking bloodbath. <laughs> like uh, so like when you're when you're in the moment, when you're actually like fighting stuff, I uh, you, you don't notice this, but like when I was watching videos of people doing this, man, it sounds like somebody's just like fucking a pumpkin every time you fight. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. Like fuck the blood pumpkin <laughs> <laughs> from software 2015. <laughs> fuck the blood <laughs> exactly uh but yeah, yeah like they they go really overboard with the foley and i don't know if it's just because when you're in the moment that is that is useful feedback about whether or not uh something landed <laughs> but uh yeah boy oh boy am i crazy have you noticed that 
Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Okay. Like it is really, really loud. Um, it's also it's it's really useful though because the there's a specific blood spurt that's like the stagger blood spurt. Yeah. Noise that comes, so you can listen for that, and if you hear it, you know that you have a couple extra hits to get in. Like I've gotten to the point where I rely on the sound a lot of the time. Yeah. To kind of know, like if there's blood spurt noises, you know you can you're safe. If there's not, you're probably going to get hit. You mm-hmm. should not draw into the back. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it, it is definitely it, it's it's less pronounced too. So like the the, the there is a boo when you're ready when you're opened up for a uh, for a visceral attack, but it is not mm-hmm. as marked as it was as a in the Parian Riposte system. As well. No, no, and it's also I mean they've never made that as satisfying uh, kinesthetically as they have in Demon Souls. Mm-hmm. Like it's really nice here, but Demon Souls I think wins the backstab Riposte. <laughs> You know, wars for just it looking brutal as hell. Yeah. Um, here it is, is a close second, though. Yeah, you're just kind of reaching into their guts. You're kalimaing them. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, looking here, Stefan um, writes in to ask, what was your what was your starting weapon in Bloodboard? I chose the Threaded Cane because I had just finished a Whipfest run on Dark Souls 2, thanks to Gary's Let's Play. <laughs> Uh, Sorry uh, to people who are listening to this. Who I, somebody asked me about that on Twitter today. I haven't finished it, and it's just hard to want to go back to vanilla Dark Souls 2 mm-hmm. with uh, Scholar and Bloodborne. Yeah. I hear. So I, I'm almost done. Like, I'm halfway through um, the uh, the second DLC with Whipfest. So like it won't take too long to finish it, but uh, I don't know when I'll get around to that, and I yeah. apologize for that. People know we're busy. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah what did you choose, Cole? Uh, so I went with the Sword Cleaver or the Saw Cleaver. Uh, just because it's uh, honestly like a really dumb reason you start a fighting game with Ryu because he's on the cover. I figured that was also the case here. It seemed like the more balanced option um, hmm. just as a mixture between a long sword and a short sword, which is what I generally go with on a uh, on a uh, first time build. Uh, so, yeah, it was kind of the Mario of the options. And I ended up sticking with it for a really long time. Mm-hmm. What'd you yeah, go with? I, uh, axe. Okay. Um, and usually... Um, one of my favorite playthroughs that I do later in Souls games is the guy with low armor but a huge fuck off weapon mm-hmm. um, to like dodge around but just really time strikes and the axe kind of allows for that. Um, so I wanted a strength weapon, um, and ultimately I kept with it as well. Um, I'm going through these super hard chalice dungeon things and I have two backup weapons that are almost as leveled up that are kind of situational, but I still the axe does the most damage and is the one I'm most used to, mostly because of reach. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, uh, it's trick weapon state is a halberd, yeah. um, which is something I'm always very comfortable with. And, uh, you can just since um, so much of the combat in Bloodborne is about getting the first hit in, you can do a running attack and attack somebody from well outside of their, their kind of, uh, aggression nice. sphere or whatever. Um, so I, I, that served me really, really well. I think that, and we'll talk about this in the next episode, but there's a lot of kind of design decisions as far as weapon rarity that are going to, I think a lot of people will stick with their first weapon. Yeah for much of the game because you don't get a second weapon for a very long time. Yeah. Um, which I think is kind of a bummer uh, a bit. still, but like, I like the two other weapons I use as my backups. Um, one of which is your, your weapon. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's one of my backups and the, uh, the other weapon, the weapons I've played with have been very fun. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like, I get this far and I find a weapon that's like blood tinge, <laughs> you know, has a blood tinge or an arcade stat. Like what the fuck am I going to do with that? <laughs> um, you weren't encouraging me to, to do anything with arcane for yeah. the first third of the game. <laughs> Man, it wasn't until uh, until like just a couple days ago, like uh, Tuesday or whatever, that I uh, that I figured out how magic works in this game and didn't I, I, realize I had the potential in me all along. It wasn't the feather. Well, it was the yeah. feather I was carrying. <laughs> yeah. I I know how it works. I still haven't used it though, just because it doesn't. I haven't put any points in arcane. It doesn't help that yeah. much. Um, it's cool. I like the spells I've seen, but like it is, they have dialed that so far back. Yeah, um, as to be vestigial, just about. Moving on, um, I'm going to butcher your name, sir. I'm very sorry, but I'm going to say Sajad. And mm-hmm. please uh, forgive me if that is if that is incorrect. But uh, he gives us some praise, but he says, Fair, care to fancy a Dark Souls question? So let's go back in time. <laughs> well, perhaps we shall. <laughs> Perchance to question. Yeah. Yes. Uh, ever notice how distant objects and buildings in Dark Souls appear foggy and distorted? Uh, you can see the clouded Duke's archives all the way from the Undead Berg, and it gets clearer to see as you move closer to Anor Londo. I'm not sure if this is a deliberate graphical effect or a design decision to prevent lag by drawing such long distances constantly. Uh, by avoiding uh, drawing those constantly. Uh, but it seems to fit the strange atmosphere of Lordran. Uh, this begs the question, why is Lordran so foggy? Are the flames fading due to excess moisture? Oh, I have hmm. the actual reason for this, but mm-hmm. we, can, we, well, we, we, can, we can speculate if we want. 
Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, fog in the Souls games is like a proper noun kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's just, uh, you know, it, like I think that is uh, likely not actual fog mm-hmm. um, because if it was fog. Demons pop out of that. Yeah. It is a thinny. It is the mist. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But the like the actual it's, it's an artistic decision. Like if you look at uh, there, there's a concept called atmospheric. Um, um, let's oh gosh, atmospheric distortion or something like that, where a way to represent stuff as being far away um, to kind of match the real world is to make it appear you know foggy, faded, gray, distinct because the actual air and the stuff that is within the air, um, even if it is not objectively foggy, but water moisture and stuff like that is is occluding your view to a certain extent. So if you if you notice in the real world, real world even on a clear day stuff that is sufficiently far away is going to appear a little bit softer and uh, indistinct compared to stuff that is close up just because there is, you know, more air between you and it than if it was closer up. It's also is a little bit of uh, science, science time. The science Mm -hmm. zone um, (laughs) is that that's why sunsets look better than sunrises. Yep. um, Is because there's more shit in the air at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So you get all of this like pollution and dust and stuff and it makes sunsets look outstanding. It magnifies it. Yep, and then sunrises are look like bland garbage <laughs> events. Like it's a celestial nightmare. It's a fucking, you know, it's just God taking his shit upon the earth. Like a sun. I don't know when the last time it was you sat up and looked at a sunrise, but like Ugh, the worst if you're doing it to make out life. with a yeah, exactly. Like if you were doing it to try to get um, you know, make out with a, a person you want to make out with, mm-hmm. great. And if it worked, more power to you. But as an adult, I can say that sunrises are the absolute fucking worst, and there's no reason to be up that early. Never. <laughs> yeah. I love. I, I just love the stances you take on like perfectly pleasant things. <laughs> yeah, like, it's it's not pleasant though. Like we were just talking about Medulla. Medulla is in a state of perpetual sunset. And it's True. Beautiful. True. It was yeah. in a, a state of perpetual sunrise. Like mm-hmm. it would just look like you were inside with fluorescent lights. <laughs> like it just this pale yeah. white light. I think we can all agree Twilight is uh, is a fantastic book and is also the perfect atmospheric time. Yeah, it's both. <laughs> let's uh let's let's see here uh there's been some stuff that's kind of like dropped on psn we have robin uh robin gilmore uh our our, our friend hey, and benefactor hey robin uh who writes in on the contact forum um uh kind of saying hey it looks like shadow tower is being released on psn soon um for next week i'd love to hear whether you guys have played this game at all and your thoughts about it in general cheers um yeah i i uh, haven't played it mm-hmm. i bought it a physical copy before you know before this had happened um, which is kind of bu- of a bummer, um, but there, I want to play it. The reason why I haven't is because we might do it for the show, right? Um, so I'm holding off. Yeah, um, I really want to though. Yeah, we've got to keep it in our back pocket, and you know I've kind of considered that because there's like an embarrassment of riches in terms of from games being easily available on uh, on on digital distribution now because Echo Knight just came out here very recently. Um, and I'm a big fan of Echo Night Beyond, which is a uh, haunted house story told on a space station, like a much better uh, event horizon. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and yeah, like that is that that is fantastic and definitely worth diving into. Um, Shadow Tower looks great. However, I think that I'm a lot more interested in Shadow Tower Abyss because that is the one that is closer to uh, Demon Souls. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I probably will play both of them. Like yeah. once we decide what to do. Like I own all the Kingsfield games now that are released in America and I want to play those too and just haven't because of the show. Right. Um, who knows when, what kind of time we're gonna have to kill between like Bloodborne and, you know, Bloodborne 2, which yeah. probably won't be a Bloodborne 2, but I guess, but whatever mm-hmm. the next thing that the, this team does. Yeah. You know? Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm very interested. I really hope what I would love is that the, um, excuse me, the popularity of Bloodborne uh, is such that the Kingsfield games get released on PSN. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, because, I mean, those, like, I doubt for, and unless the show goes on for another, like, five or six years, I doubt we'll end up covering the first two Kingsfields. Mm-hmm. So I think those are safe to play, but I'd rather play them on my PSP. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Being and able to... They, and release the first one, the Japanese only one, because you can <laughs> you can definitely do that, uh, play that without knowing the, the text. Right. So... Hmm. Like, yeah. that's that, that's the problem, like, especially with, uh, with Shadow Tower Abyss. Now that it's been translated by fans... It's never mm-hmm. going to be released. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, like that is uh, something being fan translated is just the, the 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 kiss of death for something being localized officially. Yeah, yeah. So that is uh, that, that that is just a little bit of a bummer. Yeah. yeah. Um. I also and I mentioned this um in an extra episode for Watch Out Fireballs, but I picked up an Armored Core game too, mm-hmm. um, which I want to check out. But like, we might end up doing like an other games from from thing. We don't know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh, I mean, so. just in general, but also with that, like yeah. in the future. So. Yeah. 
So uh, just have not done it. Yeah. But uh, I'm excited. It's good to see that uh, that this is coming through. Man, it's great to see how popular Bloodborne is, like the way that yeah. it's been received is so well. Like this, you know, I, I don't normally like glorify in something being in the mainstream. Like I don't really care so much. Mm-hmm. But that seems, you know, it's it's rewarding a piece of work that I enjoy. Yeah. And a, and a team that I think does awesome work. So, you know, good on you from. <laughs> yep, exactly. Agreed. Yeah. Like if this had come out, like I I would still be way into covering it if this like it's across the board, mm-hmm. you know, but I'm just happy. I don't know. This will make them do more stuff. Like there's that element of like uh, keeping the spigot, mm-hmm. you know, open. Like the more this, these people are encouraged to do stuff, the more likely there's going to be more. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yep. And I hate to say it, but that's about the last of the of the responses here that are not like specific to something about Bloodborne that we can cover in the in the first episodes. So, yeah. So if you ask the question about that, don't feel uh, discouraged because we're probably going to cover it next episode Mm -hmm. um i've made a list of things that like these are the mechanics that we have to do Mm -hmm. um so hopefully those get covered and if not we'll show each other up yeah Mm -hmm. fantastic so thank you everybody for writing in and thank you for uh listening to this rather unorthodox episode for us yeah um look forward as i I mean i hate to harp on it but we've got a bunch of uh really cool guests yeah coming up this season several of which i'm very excited about Mm -hmm. i guess all of them i'm excited about (laughs) (laughs) like i sound like i'm not um but other ones but it it is uh, a lot of new faces Mm -hmm. um this part of that kind of swell of goodwill for uh bloodborne means that uh, a lot of more people are playing it Mm -hmm. and uh and consequently it's been people have been very generous um, with their commitments. Um, so as you know, next episode, we are covering our generalities and covering, um, the, uh, the clinic, mm-hmm. the opening area kind of tutorial and the hunter's dream. Yep. Um, and then after that, we are covering central Yarnum with Vati Vidya. Yes. So that is a huge gap. People have asked, have been asking for him for a long time. And, mm-hmm. uh, it is, uh, uh, definitely very satisfying that we're going to finally get a chance to speak with the man himself. Yep, and uh, we can only hope that we don't make him regret it. <laughs> um, I know. I, I hopefully I, I've met him, and he's a super nice guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you uh, if you have uh, comments about the tutorial area mm-hmm. um, or the uh, the initial clinic area, um, please hit us up at duckfeed.tv forward slash contact. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you would like to support us in other ways, you can head on over to patreon.com forward slash duckfeed TV. Mm-hmm. And if you'd like to talk with other fans of the show and Bloodborne and Souls and all of that, we have a very active Facebook page at facebook.com slash bonfireside chat. Yeah. And we, the one, you know, don't be offended if, uh, if I've ignored you on there um, or if I haven't responded to your thing. I'm just now kind of working on the backlog because I was yeah. definitely afraid of spoilers. Mm hmm. Um, it is the weird way I work with these games. Like once I've done my <laughs> canon playthrough, then lay all, it on me. All but, bets are off. Open the floodgates. Yeah. yeah. But until that point, I'm, I'm very spoiler shy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, thanks everybody for indulging us this weird one off. Um, while, you know, the, the wiki master is like, I'm looking at you, illusory wall. <laughs> Tell me how insight works. Tell me every fucking thing. <laughs> uh, so we, we really, we, really, it's not we have a vague <laughs> idea. We can give a summary, but that summary might be incomplete and we would look like jackasses. Yeah, and that could still happen. Like we'll end up, we will probably end up repeating information that will get disproven yeah. um, through that because this game has a lot of uh, the mechanics do feel esoteric as hell. Yeah. Um, but we want to at least have the best possible information at first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. So thank you everybody for listening, and we look forward to uh, uh, talking with you next week uh, as we dive into uh, the the nitty gritty of Bloodborne and uh, uh, you kind of get that journey underway. Yeah, very excited. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, until next time, um, do we have a sign-off yet? Uh, I'm just going to stick with Fear the Old Blood for right now as, okay. I, as I work through the dialogue. May the, may, what is the, man, there's the thing that Alfred says, may, <laughs> may the good blood guide your way. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's something. one of the. Oh, oh you, know, you know what I found one? A hunter is never alone. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, because a hunter is never alone. Remember, a hunter is never alone. And we can still kind of say Mombasa. Yeah, we, I mean, always. I mean, because yeah. of that line in the beta, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And we all pray that we will have far more soon.